obviously you know i think if you've watched this channel long enough you would have known that i'm no fan of amelia lens right I'm, I'm no fan of what she represents i think it's um vapid um in meaningless dance music that is essentially uh ridding us no or reminding us of all the things that we hate right celebrity um icon culture spreading out your arms and that jesus post all the stuff that i hate about dance music she kind of encapsulates in that regard um and she's kind of catapulted into stardom the last few years covering every single festival playing the same drudgy top 10 top 20 beat port classics that she gets a hold of and just generally being really uninspired by anything that she puts out there now the funny thing is that since lockdown and covid she's been one of the main proprietors of this unfortunate term deemed um that kind of was spread across uh, twitter for the most part called business techno which essentially describes a segment of the techno or dance music scene that is more concerned with air might or it's more concerned with business class private jets uh random people in the booth uh bottles of gray goose uh burberry cloves right that's what Givenchy. that's what um, chris richard ricardo tishi designs and no burberry actually ricardo tishi at burberry um circle loco dc10 you know that whole kind of crew um those are fingers in the air sunglasses at night all kind of vibe um and she seems to be one of the people associated with it and somehow during the lockdown she kind of sullied her reputation more so by um flouting some of the rules for covid and playing in some very underground secret parties that she didn't post on her own social media feed now of course because the internet is the internet everyone finds a clips of hers and posts them online of her playing in these places even though she's not putting them out there and it goes to kind of show and illustrate the hypocrisy of a dj who's always talking about the environment and you know global warming and veganism but was very quick to go out and you know pollute the earth more with her you know unnecessary air travel to go and play in countries such as italy that were you know still suffering the after effects of covid just so she can pick up a check now again picking up a check thing isn't a problem i think now my opinion on dj's playing has completely changed to it being six months ago i think you know governments are most uh governments haven't necessarily reacted well to covid they're going to be slow to reopen our sector of interest i think um, artists regardless of where you fall on the hierarchy you're going to need some ability to make some kind of income um you know no one is rich forever if you have no way of making money all you're going to have is outgoings i completely understand that but it's just um i guess a hard pill to swallow for some of the middle tier and um, kind of uh bottom tier artists who prior or during the kind of beginning stages of covid everyone sort of had all the people that i was kind of listening to had this naive hope that somehow covid would um necessitate the return back to the roots of dance music right going back to kind of local communities promoters promoting local artists and giving them the platform to play in front of a captive audience because guess what if we're all locked indoors and we all get sent out at the same time you won't care who's playing behind the booth you just want someone to play and kind of carry you through the entire night so why bother going and booking a Sven Var and Marcel Dietman and Ben Clock, all these people when you can just book somebody around the corner in your hood in your area who, who could play just as good as a set if given the opportunity and obviously they get a chance to play in front of a captive audience blah 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 but that didn't happen unfortunately the reality of it is actually what ended up happening again which is kind of you know kind of goes to show some of our maybe naive hopes was that because of the lack of options available because of the um, restrictions that were imposed on promoters and on the countries the promoters that were putting these events on that were putting their money on the line and also risking their reputation and the health and safety of everyone else at the event they didn't want to take any chances so they'd much rather book the certified dj who can sell tickets right especially in these uncertain times then go and book somebody unknown in the hopes of getting people out the same way you're just not gonna i guess attract the same crowd if you book you know unknown dj in your local hood as opposed to nina kravitz now my opinion i completely disagree with that and i think in this era or in this period in time even if it was wherever in italy it may have been where they basically you know they're quite possibly might be the best dance music fans in the world in terms of their fandom for djs and stuff but i think even in a place like italy where they obsess over djs and you know djs are as famous as some big hip-hop acts and pop stars and whatever it may be i still think if you was able to get some local promoter to um 
play some local acts who have produced some music or whatever it may be or remixes or whatever just local DJs that are well known um, local favourites they could have easily done a good enough job and still commanded the same amount of people to go and buy tickets in my opinion now obviously Amelia Lenz kind of went out there and played a few gigs and you know we all saw them happening but for some reason she had an interview with a magazine called uh, was it called Cult uh Kaut Bo- Kaut magazine a print and online magazine for art fashion and music based in berlin and she somehow i guess had some sort of amnesia and forgot that she played this event and business text tesno uh took some screenshots of the interview um, which really makes me wonder why people like this lie when you have video evidence of the contrary so this is a screenshot um the magazine asks her the following i've already touched on music you're a DJ producer and label boss. What's it like for you at the moment to not be able to tour? Do you feel more or less inspired, right? This is the exact question and her her response. Emily, I have very mixed feelings and it's almost as if I feel different every day. Most of the time, I'm truly enjoying being home, enjoying um, having so much time to myself and for my friends and my family, but I really miss touring, which is odd because she's been on tour. She's played at Possessions Party. She's played at other parties. She did the Italian kind of, what's that, um, Coliseum-y type of place that everyone was playing at in the middle of the summer. She's played. It continues. I started making music because I knew that uh, kind of track and tours I wanted to play during my sets. Even up until today, all my tracks were made for the dance floor. So I'm struggling to feel inspired to finish my tracks. For the label, it's great to have all this time since I really can take time to listen to the track of the artist over and over. But it's also weird to release an EP without getting to play the record for a crowd, which is a fundamental lie. She's played for a crowd. And if you're wondering, I guess, you know, she has played to guys like, yes, categorically, Emily Lenz is a liar because she has played to crowds. Here's an example. This is a video from a guy called Techno is the Answer, Amelia Lenz, Possession Techno Opener in Paris on the 2nd of August. Let's play it. As you can see, I'm gonna... I'm gonna scan forward, pack crowd. You can obviously see her bobbing her head doing a silly dance. Even though she's got a mask on, you know, we know that's her behind the decks, right? Arm movements. The same. Imagine leaving your home to go listen to this garbage, right? Imagine. But anyway, who knows? So that's her playing there. And then we scan forward to another clip. This is Amelia Lenz playing at the, that's the place called, it's called the Gwen, Guindalina Club, right? And this is in the south of Italy. Quite clearly, right? This is on what the fifteenth. This is the couple of weeks after the position party. So all this, so all this nonsense about not being able to finish tracks because you can't hear them on the dance floor. Isn't that a dance floor? Aren't those people? Aren't those tracks that she's playing? Boring music. We continue again. Another clip, and this is the same night, same event, early in the morning. quite clear that she's there and and like i said i don't have any issue with these people going out and playing their music for whoever crowd that wants to go see them i have my um reservations and questions why anybody would want to put themselves in harm's way to hear an artist like herself when things reopen she's going to be playing everywhere right 100 million gigs in all different places any place that pays her she'll go and play no problem so to put yourself in harm to go see her play is really doesn't make any sense she's got a million and one recordings available online of her sets it doesn't really make any sense to leave the house for that now in her point of view yes make your money make sure you pay your bills that's all well and good but again why lie why lie there's no need to lie because there's video evidence out there so it makes me think that maybe this segment of djs is ashamed or embarrassed by what they did prior in the summer which again i don't blame them for i think they took matters in their own hands governments weren't necessarily providing the right amount of instructions directions or guidance but I, i wonder if there's a level of guilt especially if you're on the media lens having played in possession parties um you know traveled most of europe during the time you know of this pandemic and the places that you have traveled have now had a second spike you know paris is essentially shut down um you know they're limiting people going out bars are not open bloody blah 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 i wonder if those people that play those events have any kind of guilt in terms of what they've done now 
can you prove that some of those events led to some of the spikes probably not the same way the uk is having this argument about what is actually contributing to some of the positive cases but regardless you know outright kind of lying on a magazine and saying that you can't finish track because you can't tour is a madness because you're touring right here on the screen no idea why these people do it but again what do i know in the situation maybe there's another bigger brighter thing out there that i'm probably not identifying with when it comes to the situation but it's very very strange but who knows who knows